Hello from Becky and me. Welcome to the program. First tonight, Norfolk-based car maker Lotus has unveiled plans that will take the company in a radically new direction. It's known worldwide for its Formula One heritage and unique sports car designs produced at Hethel just outside of Norwich. Today, at the Paris Motor Show, Lotus unveiled five new models, including a four-door family saloon and a green city car. Well, the company says it's aiming at the mass market and will create 1,200 new jobs, but they're unlikely to be in Norfolk. Well, Elodie Harper is at the Paris Motor Show for us tonight. Elodie, what did Lotus say was behind their new approach? Well, here at the Paris Motor Show, Lotus have announced their intention to take their brand back to the position it was in 20 to 30 years ago. That is, as a household name that everyone's heard of. And to do that, it would mean pumping £800 million into their car production. Now, that's an ambitious plan, and it was a very ambitious launch. They unveiled five new cars at once, where most manufacturers would just unveil one. And that included, for the first time for Lotus, a four-door saloon and also a concept car that was a city car. But five cars is an awful lot of cars to make, and the big question remains, where will they be made? Five cars, one company. For the first time, Lotus are giving us a four-door saloon, hybrid engines and, most controversially, a city car. Building these models over the next five years could create over a thousand manufacturing jobs. It is a relaunch, a remake of the Lotus brand. Uh, we will introduce today um, a complete future, the complete future uh, product lineup for the next five years. Hethel is intrinsically linked to the Lotus brand, but currently the Norfolk plant doesn't have the capacity to build all five models. Lotus's chief executive says the company needs to be run more efficiently. So what does that mean for Hethel? And I don't think that the, uh, a sports car actually is defined by where it's been built. I believe it's, it's, it's about the brand and it's about the roots of the brand. Uh, in today's uh, globalization, I don't think where it's been built makes really a difference. It sounds to me as if, you know, Hethel is something you would like to do, but I'm getting signals that you think it probably isn't going to be possible. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, possibly yes. Professor Peter Stevens, who was chief designer at Lotus in the 1980s, believes producing the new cars outside Hethel might pose problems for Lotus's reputation. When I was there, people would, would turn up, you know, a group of Japanese enthusiasts, and they'd just want to see Hethel. They'd want to see where Lotuses were made. Uh, it's hard to imagine people, you know, disciples going to somewhere else to see a Lotus city car being made. So, I mean, I think Hethel is important. What we're keen to see is that Lotus uh, continues to be based in Norfolk, uh, continues to grow its presence here and employs more people uh, in the county. Until now, Lotus was associated with niche sports cars, but today they've set their sights on the luxury car market and potentially the mass market with a family city car. But is this stretching the brand too far? You buy a Lotus because you want a sports car, uh, an affordable supercar, as some people call them. You don't suddenly wake up one morning and think, I know I want a little runabout, I'll pick a Lotus. The two things to me emotionally just don't go together. We would like to welcome supermodel Naomi Campbell and rock legend Brian May from Queen, two iconic Brits to unveil a British icon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the new Lotus Esprit. This was a high-profile launch amidst the glamour of one of the world's most prestigious motor shows, and the competition was certainly here to see it. Representatives from McLaren and Lamborghini told me they were surprised by the ambitious nature of the launch, but impressed by its designs. Um, I think it's fantastic to see Lotus brand come back. Um, you know, we stayed around for it. Um, really looking forward to see what they can do with it. I'm really surprised by all the news about the Lotus, because we didn't expect all this. What, what did, you didn't expect all of the cars no, at no, once? all the cars at once, no, for sure. If Lotus's gamble pays off, it could revolutionise their brand. But although the company has promised to retain its headquarters at Hethel, production for these new models could be moving out of the UK or even out of Europe. Well, let's return to Elodie in Paris now. Elodie, assuming that the production may go as far afield as, say, Malaysia, what does this mean for Hethel? Well... 
One thing that the chief executive was absolutely clear about is that the headquarters are going to remain at Hethel. He gave that as, as a total guarantee. But what is in, in doubt is whether they're going to be able to build all these five new models there, and they are looking at options of going further abroad, that they wouldn't specify where. Now, the chief executive did tell me that one of the ways they could keep all their car production at Hethel, including the new models, is if they can secure loans from the British government in order to create new jobs and also build new facilities at the Norfolk plant. Now, we did speak to the Department of Business, Innovation and Skills, and they confirmed they are indeed in talks with Lotus, but they wouldn't comment at what stage those talks were at. I also feel, on a lighter note, I should point out that anyone who saw that report and would like to get their hands on that city car, I'm afraid that won't be possible. It's a concept car at the moment. It's just a design and isn't going to go on sale just yet. OK, thanks very much, Elodie. Next tonight, the judge who told a gang of youths they brought a catapult attack upon themselves. Bruce Harwood suffered two years of harassment from the group at his home at Chatteris in Cambridgeshire before he took matters into his own hands and fired ball bearings at them. Three people were hit. But despite Bruce pleading guilty to causing actual bodily harm, the judge decided not to award the gang any compensation, as Stuart Leafs reports. It was a dream home for Bruce Harwood, the top floor flat in this grade two listed Georgian townhouse in Chatteris. But two years of repeated harassment by local youths led him to take the law into his own hands, using a catapult to fire ball bearings at his tormentors, an act which landed him in court. Perhaps I, I should have phoned the police, but my, my immediate reaction was I wanted to get them out of there as fast as possible. And I remembered in a box that I'd packed from a previous move that there was this catapult. And I just grabbed a handful of the, uh, the BBs that it came with and just sprayed them down in the hope of scattering them and scaring them out of the compound. So there have been stones thrown at it, eggs thrown at it. There's been a lot of verbal abuse uh, from the youths on the other side of the street. Uh, in the winter time, there were snowballs uh, hurled at the windows of the building. It's, it's just continuous badgering. As this test shows, a catapult similar to the one Mr Harwood used can easily rip through paper at close range. Bruce Harwood's victims suffered minor injuries to their legs and groins. The Criminal Law Act 1967 states a person may use such force as is reasonable in the circumstances in the prevention of crime or in effecting or assisting in the lawful arrest of offenders or suspected offenders. At Cambridge Crown Court, Bruce Harwood admitted causing actual bodily harm and he was ordered to do 150 hours of unpaid work in the community. But when it came to the issue of a £1,200 compensation claim by his victims, Judge Gareth Hawksworth said that Mr Harwood and other residents had suffered a number of disturbances that amounted to deliberate provocation. He said, I think it wholly inappropriate that I make a compensation order given that they brought this very much upon themselves. I think in these circumstances the court has exercised a degree of common sense. It's taken account of the fact that there was provocation by these uh, young men towards uh, the man concerned and uh, other residents in the flats. In Chatteris today there was support for the judge's actions. Well, that's true what it, the judge did uh, say and uh, they do not deserve compensation for what they do because they're nothing but vandals. I don't blame the guy for going out there and having a pop at them. Mr Harwood is due to move out of his Chatteris flat next month, hoping to forget all about the dream home that turned into a nightmare. Stuart Leith's Anglia News. OK, it's just gone ten minutes past six. More